Welcome to the very first episode of The Art of Thought. I'm your host, Kwaku Asafua J. This has been recorded on July 11th, 2018. This episode, Technology Addiction. So, in technology addiction, uh, we've heard this topic all the time lately, you know, as we've gotten into it, the more, as people have gotten easier access to phones and computers and games and anything that's technology related, we have smart home devices and everything like that. Now, what is technology addiction, first of all? Technology addiction, according to the study.com, uh, they say that technology addiction is a broad term that refers to the uncontrollable urge to use technolo- technological devices such as computers, smartphones, and gaming systems. Pretty much what I just said. I'll just read the rest of the paragraph. It says here, technology addiction appears to be more prevalent among teenagers, but is found amongst the broader population as well. According to the International Journal of Neuropsychiatric Medicine, as uh, as many as one in eight Americans suffers from the type of technology addiction. So technology addiction, as people are saying here, is is an basically you're obsessed with technology. Like it takes over your mind. It takes over you. You're not able to do daily functions that you should be doing to take care of yourself because of said technology. So, um, types of technology out there we have like phones like they say we have computers we have smartphones we have tablets which are pretty much computers same as smartphones but computers tablets smartphones gaming systems um i won't even go as far as saying social media but social media is a way use use social media through technology you know technology allows you to get access to social media and it's an interesting topic um, in that I myself, I'm 24 years old, you know, recent college grad. So I, I know about those people who don't get out of their room. You know, I, I know them very well. Um, and they are usually in their room studying, either studying or playing games. Um, they're not they're not doing much. You know, my crowd in college wasn't necessarily the crowd that like goes out all the time. Uh, they usually stay. We usually stay inside, you know, nerdy. And yeah, technology addiction, you would think, okay, so these people don't go out often. Are they addicted to technology? I can't really say yes or no, you know, Um, because maybe you just don't like to interact with people. You know, I myself don't interact too much with people. You know, I do do it, obviously. Otherwise, I'd go insane. But um Maybe you just don't want to interact with people or you feel weird interacting with people on long periods of time. Maybe you just feel awkward in large groups of people. Maybe you're just more comfortable talking to people um, just over not face to face, but just, you know, over over the Internet, um, over some kind of device, something to help you speak to people, because these people that I'm talking about, they they're not just playing down. They're not just sitting down playing a game. Um, like say Final Fantasy, they're not just sitting down playing an RPG game like Dragon Age, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and all this stuff. Um, a lot of time they're playing online with their friends. I'm not saying Fortnite necessarily, even though that's a big, big one of the largest games out there right now is Fortnite and PUBG, uh, player known as Battlegrounds. But they are not necessarily just playing those games. They are literally. Um, they are literally talking to people online, their friends online. Some of their friends are like in another dorm or another apartment in the same area, but they don't feel like going out. So they just speak to each other over that. Does that mean they're addicted? Um, because in this, you know, they say it's a broad term, which it is because it's an un- uncontrollable urge to use technological devices such as computers, smartphones and gaming systems, you know. So you just you wonder Okay, if I'd rather speak to someone over a text message rather than over face-to-face conversation, does that make me addicted? If I would rather speak to someone over a phone call or FaceTime call or a video chat, does that make me addicted to technology? Because I'd rather speak to them over in person, you know? That's, that's a more specific use case for technology addiction. Um, it's not necessarily... You know, I am just, I, I can't, you know, do much. I, I, I just, I forget to take showers. I forget to 
uh, eat, I forget to drink water or any kind of fluids, I forget to use the bathroom and things like that because I'm so addicted. Now, there are those extreme cases. Uh, in fact, let me see if I can find this article here. There are those extreme cases. Um, let's see. It says signs if your loved one is addicted. This is from addiction.com. I'm just looking at general websites, you know. Uh, it says here, okay, there's a there's some things that they say here. I'll read this paragraph uh, to you guys. So it says, as you probably know, it can be very difficult to recognize early on that your friend or family member has been involved in drugs or another addictive behavior. Uh, you let's just, let me just make sure this is on uh, technology addiction, though. I don't want it to be broad. Let's see. Uh, no, this is just addiction in general, but it, it's pretty much similar. Um, or, or another addictive behavior. You should also know that your loved one is unlikely to admit to a problem. Addicts tend to cover their tracks, but the variety of, there are a variety of signs that you might be seeing now, even ones that you might have brushed aside, not wanting to believe that an addiction could be at play. See how many of these common warning signs the US, from the U.S. Department of uh, Human and Health Services that your loved one may have. Okay, so they have here uh, about, looks like 10, 10 bullet points here that I'll read out, and you guys can just determine whether or not you think you're addicted to technology, if they work. Um, let's see, uh, actually these don't really work that well, it says a shift in mood, attitude, or motivation, uh, a, a new friend, a new friends, wait, a new friends and new hangouts, I, poor performance or at work or school and or being absent, secretive behavior such as lying, uh, sudden weight loss or gain, um, increased spending, a sudden increased spending. I'm going to skip over this other one that says bloodshot eyes or enlarged pupils because you're not shooting up heroin, you're playing a video game or you're just looking, you're just using your phone all the time. Um, a giving up of one's favorite pastimes and hobbies. Uh, I can't really, I don't really know about that being part of uh, technology addiction. That's just for addiction in general. Uh, it says uh, strange body odors, trembling hands. Um, you'll have body odor if you do use technology too much because you probably aren't taking care of yourself to take a shower, but this is kind of general for all addictions, unusual changes in sleeping patterns or schedule. So I'd say the ones that apply more to tech addiction would be a shift in mood, attitude, or motivation, um, uh, poor performance at school or work and or being absent, secretive behavior such as lying because, you know, you're doing that just so that you can you know, get back to doing your thing, um, sudden weight loss or gain, you know, you either forget to eat or you eat too much, you're sitting in the same place for too long, um, an unexplained increased spending, yeah, I could see that too, because, you know, again, if you're addicted to technology, you always want the latest thing, or you always need to re-up on whatever you're, you're trying to dig through, um, let's see, it says, giving up on one's favorite pastimes and hobbies, I think, if you have a tech addiction, you're not going to, your pastime a hobby was probably the technology itself or it was through it or unusual changes in sleeping patterns or schedule. That's another one um, that I think that could be possible. It's all interesting just reading up on this topic. If this government website will work, looks like this is not, this government website is not working. Uh, it's all an interesting topic to see. Um... Let's see here. Okay. Oh, I need to be a member to to look up these symptoms from study.com. Can't do that. It's too much work. Um, let's see. Okay. From it says Pew Research Center. This is on rehabcenter.net. Uh, I know I'm looking at some general websites. Um, remember I'm not a professional at any of this. I am just kind of interested in this topic. Uh, it says here Statista, rather, reports that in 2007, 122 million people purchased a new smartphone. In 2015, that number was up to 1.4 billion, showing an upward digital trend that doesn't appear to be stopping anytime soon. Yeah, we are getting to the digital age. Um, these numbers are relevant because worldwide, people worldwide are spending more and more time on these types of devices. Medical Daily reported on one study that found the average college student sends and receives approximately 109.5 text messages, text messages a day and checks their phone 60 times per day. Um, I don't know how you can send half a text message, 
so I'll say 109 or 110 text messages a day. I know they just divided it by whatever the majority is. Um, that's interesting. And it says Pew Research Center noted that while cell phones and smartphones are dominating the market as the most commonly owned devices, with 92% of Americans having one, that's American adults having one, other technological technologically advanced items can be found in a number of U.S. homes. For instance, 73% of U.S. owns a desktop or laptop computer and 45% have a tablet of some sort. So the statistics say here, based off of uh, rehabcenter.net, um, they say 92% of people own a cell phone, Americans own a cell phone, 73% use a computer, 45% uh, own a tablet, which is all these numbers are growing steadily. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, of course, all these devices make it easier for us to stay in touch with family, friends, and what's going on in the world, but their increased prevalence has a downside as well. For some people, technology addiction has already taken or will take hold. This is a dark website. That's pretty dark. So people are saying that, you know, because we're constantly relying more and more on technology, um, you know, are we developing an addiction for ourselves, like low-key addiction? Um, I don't know. I really don't. Um, yeah, I, I can't really say so. Me, myself, you know, I own a desktop, a nice, you know, gaming desktop that I built um, on an iPad Pro. I own a cell phone and I own an Apple Watch and an Xbox. Yeah, that's that's about it. Other than the TV screen here, that's about it. And me, myself as well, I also, you know, I'm recording this podcast via the Internet. I am also, you know, working on some personal training stuff, health field and things like that. So it's you can't in my position i can't say that i'm addicted to technology because yeah i sleep late very late actually like two in the morning late it's just how i am being a recent college graduate and stuff we just we're just so used to sleeping late because of studying and all the other college drama that you just don't sleep anyway but maybe given a year i'll just adjust and i'll just become the regular adult that everyone does everyone is um but technology addiction is it a thing i don't know I really don't. Um, there are you have probably seen some YouTube videos, probably and some just videos on the internet of and stories of people who, like people who are around my age, they still with the, live with their parents and they uh, are so addicted to their video games that once their parent took it away or tried to take it away suddenly, like when they came back from a store or something and took it away, they like threw a tantrum, like a fit, at age twenty plus. They threw a fit. There's, they don't have any autism spectrum in them. They don't have anything. It's just a regular person, and they threw a fit, you know, and they got so angry. They screamed and stuff like that. They almost broke things just because they wanted their game back, you know, that their parent probably bought for them years back anyway. That, I think, is is closer to the whole, you know, technology addiction thing. And that you get so angry that you're not, you don't have access to your device, that you throw a fit because you don't have it. I know it's sudden that you don't have it, but you get so angry that you throw a fit that you don't have your device. That's pretty rough, you know. To me, that's that's pretty rough. That's crazy. Um, I have never even gone through that. It says, let me see says my my device sampling rates do not match please check audio hardware preferences i'll check that in a bit but yeah it's it's crazy um technology addiction it's it's a common thing it's it's so bad right now that people are actually let me get a let me get a sip of this protein shake yeah it's so bad that you know apple as a company in their latest release, iOS 12, it's not out yet, but it's in beta, public beta now. Um, anyone can really get it now, even though it's public beta. Uh, their latest release, they released an app called, not an app, a function in their settings app called Screen Time. And what Screen Time does is it allows you to limit, put limits on how long you can use your device or use like apps and stuff on your device. So say you browse Facebook all the time. You can go on Screen Time in your settings. In fact, I have... Let me grab, let me grab my phone here. Um, let's see. 
we have here I'm trying to go to my phone settings so you go to your settings when you have iOS 12 uh, hopefully if anyone does have it um, and you don't know how to access it like at first I didn't I thought it was an app uh, it's in your settings you go to settings you scroll down underneath where it says do not disturb and notifications and sound and haptics you'll see screen time as a new addition and you can set screen time um, for all devices and you can see the devices for me is I have my iPad and I have my phone uh, connected to it because both of them have the iOS 12 beta and you can set downtime which just says schedule time away from the screen so if I click that it says set a time away from the screen during downtime only apps that you choose to allow and phone calls will be available so you can set downtime if you turn it on you can turn on downtime and you can be like all right I shouldn't I, I'm making sure I don't get downtime I don't I have downtime away from all these apps that I normally use all the time except for the important ones which are phone calls and maybe text messages so you can set that stuff or you can set specific apps for downtime and then you have um, app limits so app limits set the time limits for apps it's pretty straightforward I don't really have to you know explain that you can set say I only want to allow myself to have two hours for Facebook for the day and then once two hours passes on that you've been browsing Facebook total on your phone which is quite a long time honestly for your phone In fact, let me lower this thing it's kind of it looks like it's kind of loud uh, which is kind of you know a lot that you'd be browsing Facebook on your phone for two hours throughout the whole day that's a long time um, yeah you can set that and set it two hours or 30 minutes whatever it is and then when two hours or 30 minutes comes up it'll make a full screen prompt when you try to click on Facebook and it'll be like you set app limits for two hours and it'll make it kind of difficult for you to um to get back on you'll have to like go to your settings and turn off the thing or disable it temporarily or whatever it is and yeah all that stuff or you can do always allowed uh for screen time it says always allowed choose apps you want all the times you want at all times so like your important stuff you know for emergency services whatever it is um your doctor app your banking app whatever it is uh, content and privacy restrictions block inappropriate content so if you have a child you can also actually, let me see set passcode I haven't even touched that stuff um, you can set a screen time passcode set a screen time for family so basically allows you if you're a parent that's really you know you're really big in technology and you have kids you can set limits for your whole family on your iOS devices um, and if, as long as you have a family sharing account um, and the devices on the family sharing account um, you can literally monitor you can literally say okay this kid has been using these apps for two hours you can see it from any device your phone and then you can set a screen you can set a screen time limit um, app limit on it and that allows you to pretty much limit how long they use the app so you can do that for everything and it's gotten so bad that even Google themselves man these these levels are quite high let me lower it a little bit more yeah even Google and a bunch of platforms not just Apple are starting to implement these kind of strategies to get people to stop using their devices so much so often um, is it necessary I don't know I don't know it's clearly something has been they've been talking about in the news a lot um, you know I live you know kind of close to the Washington DC area and people are busy over there you know it's a lot of politicians and there's a lot of busy business people and I see people looking down at their phones everywhere people crossing the street I will be driving and people are crossing the street and looking at their phone while crossing the street and I'm just like why you can't look I I don't I myself don't understand why people don't just look away um, you know look away look at look at the road for those simple 10 seconds you know while you're crossing the street maybe five seconds depending on how fast you walk just that you're safe and then once you get across I don't care what you do you could you can look at your phone as long as you're safe because if you're looking down at your phone and a car is coming and they're in a rush for instance because you know people are like that in cities um, you get hit it could cause a bigger accident than just anything else you know so it's just it's it's not just you having the problem let me lower this thing a little bit more it's not just you having the problem it's actually it's every you know it affects everyone in a way 
uh, looking down your phone while driving. You see texting and driving, it can wait all the time. AT&T used to put that sticker on their phones back in the feature phone days. Um, it's everywhere nowadays. People are people are really just pressed in. You go to Starbucks, the first thing you see, other than people doing their work or whatever they're doing on their laptops, most people are on their phones even waiting for the, um, what's it called? Even waiting for their food to come in, you know, their, their frappuccino or whatever it is. They're, they're on their phones just just whatever they're doing they're probably just browsing aimlessly because they got nothing else to look at um when just 10 years ago people didn't just look at their phone all the time they actually spoke to people or they did something else read the newspaper or something while waiting for their food or they just looked at the people preparing their food make sure they don't drop it on the ground and then pick it up and put it back inside their stuff so it's it's gotten kind of interesting you know i went to new york and there's the same thing there i'll cross all of times square and pro and prospect park and and Central Park, there's just people looking down at their phone instead of just look, taking in the nature, taking in sunlight. Um, it's gotten to the point where I even see, you know, family members and stuff like that. They text instead of instead of calling out. I know it's like people don't want to as you get older, you don't want to be yelling and stuff like that. But family members literally call each other in the same house nowadays. I've seen it all the time. Friends, family and everything. They they call each other in the same house to ask a question when they could just call their name and they come downstairs, you know? I know calling is kind of hard and sometimes you don't hear it, but that should be a last resort rather than the first resort. Um, so it's 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 interesting. Technology addiction is a very interesting thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting topic to, to think about. So I would like to hear you guys your feedback on this whole topic of tech addiction because is it a thing? It may be. It's gotten so bad um, that, you know, we have smartwatches out there. And I feel as if my opinion for smartwatches is that, yeah, we're not ready for them, really. There's not much of a use for it. I have an Apple Watch, and I use it for music and checking my text messages or quickly responding to a message with, like, one tap button. That's it. So I don't have to type out a paragraph. Um, but smartwatches are a way so that way we're not picking up our phone when we get a, when we get a text message, for instance. Or not looking at our phone over the um, over like a meeting. Um, smartwatches also allowed, you know, so you can quickly glance to see if it's even important. Because your phone might vibrate in your pocket, and then you have to take your phone out of your pocket because the urge is there to take your phone out and take a look at what's happening. It could just be a little thing. Like just now, I got a little uh, Apple News um, announcement uh, saying that from Food Network saying that Costco now sells avocados that last twice as long. Um, it's not even an important thing to this topic at all, but it vibrated my phone and made a sound. I don't have my watch on right now, but I saw it right there. And, you know, if you were in a meeting or someone was talking to you and you got the vibration from your pocket of pointless news like that, you still just, your the urge is there to pick it up. You know, it's, that's just what it is. It's helping us, but sometimes it's overstepping in, you know all the notifications, all the distractions that technology has for us. So the watch was apparently there to, you just take a glance real quick and put it back down and you're done. You know, you don't interrupt anything. So yeah, technology addiction. Let me know what you guys think about tech addiction. Um, do you think it's uh, a thing? Um, do you know any people that you think might have it? You know, some people are addicted. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a it's a tough question. But yeah. This has been the end of the podcast right here. So my final thought on uh, tech addiction. Yeah, I don't know. It's tech addiction is a very interesting topic. It's very new. It's very new in the current age of digital technology where everything is digital and you can just quickly access information and you get your messages really quick. Your smartphone does everything and it's always with you all the time to the point where it feels awkward. So yeah. My final thought, that was pretty much it. It's kind of rambly, but whatever. Let's see how this works. Let's see how you guys uh, take this uh, topic. Tech addiction. My name is Kwaku, and I'll see you guys on the next podcast.